Hello, everyone. We are here with Luca and Stepan from Two Cellos. How are both of you today? Amazing. Enjoying the good weather awesome. in New York, finally. That's awesome. Um, so you've got a new album coming out. Score comes out March 17th. You've got a world tour launching. We're going to get to all of that, but I thought we could start with a little bit of backstory. You both grew up in Croatia, both classically trained, but when you met in high school, I hear you were rivals. How tense was this rivalry? Oh, we are still rivals. <laughs> when we play on stage, we try to be better than one another. Okay. And this is what makes us so good. Right, right. Because <laughs> you cannot relax even for a second. That's awesome. I like that, that that's productive for you guys. He couldn't beat me, so he joined. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so you each go abroad and then linked back up when you lived in London. When you guys originally met back up, was the conversation always to form your own group, or was it just because you guys have the same hometown, you wanted to get to know each other again? We always wanted to do something together. We always felt if we joined forces, something special would right. happen. And in 2010, we both ended up in London. He just finished his studies and I came to do my masters. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to do a revolution, you know, sort of. We had enough of this uh, student life as a musician, you know, uh, not knowing you know, what the future holds, you right. know, thinking it's very hard when you don't know, you know, we were depressed. I just wanted to become rich and famous. <laughs> 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 Which is hard as a classical musician right now. I mean, at that point, were you both just trying to join different chamber groups and orchestras or what was the goal really? No, we always like trained to be like soloists, classical okay. soloists. And then we couldn't do it, so <laughs> 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 we joined forces. <laughs> At what point did someone start discussing maybe we do cover songs of pop hits? No, we, uh, actually the main reason was that we felt restricted playing only right. classical music because uh, we always loved different kinds of music. Okay. We were passionate about rock, pop, uh, movie music, all kinds of music. Right. And cello can be used in so many different ways. So we felt why to use it only in this one way to play the music written hundreds of years ago, right. playing the same notes over and over again. And also there was, uh, we had so much adrenaline and right. energy. And we played classical pieces like, you know, rock stars. Like animals. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we felt like, imagine we could do some rock songs and completely go crazy and right. play with adrenaline and no one will criticize us. Right. Because right. we were very often criticized to play classical music with too much, you know. Oh, really? Power, energy. So the classical critics were saying, it was going too hard or too sort of like a rock energy yeah, when like you guys were playing. We entered many competitions and like many times we, we didn't win like top right. prize because we were too, there were too much hormones. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so the but first you know, cover. We thought like uh, there are so millions of recordings of all these classical pieces. So right. why make another recording of a piece that was recorded like 300 times already? Right. What what new can you offer to the world? Right. Why not do something new, something exciting, something? Mm -hmm. Do your own arrangement, you know, and uh, get the inspiration from different genres of music, right. not just classical. So that was like the main the main reason. The that. first one you uploaded was obviously Michael Jackson's "Smooth Criminal," which seems like an interesting choice. It took off. How soon after you put it on YouTube did you realize millions of people were watching it? Straight away. I yeah. mean. We just posted it and the first second, just, it was like, um, how do you say? Viral? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Phenomenon. Right. How soon after were labels calling you? I mean, you guys signed with Sony later that year. Yeah, I mean, everything happened in the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. like, we couldn't believe how many emails we got. Right. <laughs> he got like, because under the video, there was his like contact email address. And uh, he lost like 10 kilos of stress. Like really? We didn't sleep for a night. I put we back. So is that the 30. secret? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was very stressful because we were like thrown into this world of suddenly so many offers. Right. And we were like students, you know, growing up in classical music world. We didn't know anything about show business, about sure. how the business works. So. Uh, we, we did some, didn't make all of the choices good at the beginning, but... Well, it worked out. It, it worked out great, <laughs> yeah. so... Yeah. 
You guys uploaded that on January 20th in 2011. I understand you celebrate the anniversary every January. You know everything. <laughs> wow. But I don't know. What You're did you a guys... hardcore <laughs> fan. <laughs> yes. What did you do this year to celebrate the milestone? We never celebrate. We just keep working. You just keep working? We are masochists. There you go. <laughs> we keep punishing ourselves. Um, since then, you've also uploaded covers of They Don't Care About Us, another Michael Jackson song, Avicii's Wake Me Up, The Backstreet Boys, Shape of My Heart. How are you picking uh, these stink, songs? Stink, Stink, Shape of My Heart. Stink. Not Backstreet Boys. It could be either. <laughs> <laughs> Backstreet Boys is next album. Next album, okay. There's going to be a lot Only of fans who are going to hold you to that. <laughs> we are like a cello boy band. Cello anyway. boys. Yes. I mean, everybody needs one. I'm Nick. <laughs> <laughs> But so what's like the guiding principle? How are you guys kind of picking these songs or what are you hoping to sort of like do? Yes. No, no, we, we choose the songs that we love, that uh, mean something to us and, uh, that, and they need to sound good on cello. It's mm -hmm. very simple formula. Have you heard from any of the artists that you've covered? Has anybody reached out to say they yeah, like what you did? Or? Many, almost everyone. Really? Yes. Who was Except the Michael surprise? Jackson because he, yeah. he passed away. <laughs> But now, uh, Quincy Jones, for instance, he was very uh, uh, supportive and he liked what we did. And all these bands, they shared uh, like our versions or, or on their official. Yes, Iron Maiden, media. Green Day, Nirvana, Guns N' Roses, uh, ACDC, AC uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. We played it, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow. Avicii. Avicii. Almost everyone. Um, who has been the hardest to sort of give a new arrangement to? Like, how hard is that to come up with something new? Or how truthful do you try and stay to the original? I think Thunderstruck was the, the most okay. demanding arrangement because it's quite a simple rock song. Right. And you can't just do a straightforward arrangement. You have to come up with something of your own. Right. So we thought, like, why not combine it with... Uh, something more classical like Vivaldi or mm. you know from Baroque era and it took us actually a few months to finalize okay. that arrangement so people don't people don't uh, know how much work actually we we uh, put into arranging these songs because we always want to do something original something new right. something exciting right i'm curious I'm sure you're still in contact with people that you used to play with in traditional classical arrangements. Do they, are they impressed by what you're doing? Do they feel like what you're doing is too out there, too weird? What is kind of that conversation? No, actually, they, they're jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. No, I mean, you have, you have really like hardcore classical snobs. Sure. Which uh, think only classical music is great and not everything else is shit yeah. right. <laughs> right. screw them right but right. Uh, they're old and they're gonna die soon <laughs> <laughs> who cares and then you won't have to worry about it um in an odd way once you guys started doing this pop music you also found more success in the classical world what is there like a sad sort of irony to that to you or is that just a very welcome thing i like this guy so yeah. cute <laughs> i'm sure you do <laughs> Sorry, he was... Uh, That's okay. Uh, I was distracted by this beautiful face. face. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I was just asking if finding more success in the classical world since doing pop stuff, like, how do you take that irony? Like, is it... Yeah, this, this project opened so many doors mm -hmm. to us because, you know, less and less you see people, young people coming to the classical concerts, right. classical uh, venues, so... Now we recorded with London Symphony Orchestra, one of right. the best in the world, and and we played Sydney Opera House with Sydney Symphony, right. and many orchestras are now starting to see that we put people in the seats, right. and once you have that uh, fan base of your own, right. you know, this opened so many doors, and you know, even though we took a totally different path direction to right. get there, but we get to experience both, you know, classical and rock, like playing festivals, big festivals, arenas. Uh, so it's exciting and fulfilling right. to experience everything. Something else that opened for you was sort of a doorway into American television. You guys have been featured on The Bachelor and Glee. The Bachelor is one of our more interesting shows. What do you think of American television, I guess, I wonder? 
nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a great exposure to, for instance, we appeared on Glee as well, right. which was uh, our five minutes of fame right. in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a great uh, exposure to reach as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, we are happy and honored to be part of any opportunity. Uh, of get. course, now you've moved, you're releasing stuff from Score, your new album, which is all movie and theme-based, Game of Thrones, we just heard. Um, are you guys big movie buffs? Like, where did the idea for this album originate? Well, movie music is probably the most beautiful music right. there is. And we chose, we chose the most beautiful melodies ever written mm -hmm. from the most legendary movies. So, and arranged for the cello, it sounds even nicer, you know? Right. Because it sounds very beautiful and romantic. Right. <laughs> so this album is actually very romantic, and it appeals to anyone, right. especially girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we loved film music since we were young, you know. Uh, Morricone, mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer, James Horner, Howard Shore, these are all, all uh, composers that we admired since we were like teenagers. Right. So we always wanted to do album and playing with London Symphony Orchestra was like a childhood right. dream, like a dream come true, so. Is scoring like original music for film something that you would like to get into? Is that anything you're working on there? Yeah, definitely. We would like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that out into the universe. Um, you are also starting, yeah, there you go. Let's unite powers together, yeah. <laughs> please, everyone. Send it to the universe. Okay, you can continue. We'll check back and see if that worked. Um, you're also starting a big world tour at the end of March. You're playing Radio City here. You're playing the Greek in LA. Red Rocks, we were just discussing. What are you most looking forward to? Are you to coming to Radio City? I, yes. You are invited. <laughs> yes, thank you. So are all of you. <laughs> but so what, like when you're looking at these dates, I mean, they range from every country across the world. Like there, it's months and months and months. What are you most looking forward to on this run? New York. New York. Radio City. Have you seen any shows at Radio City? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time to go to other people's shows. I guess that's true. I wish we, I could listen our show. You probably can listen to your show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, that's all the questions from me. We are going to take a couple from the audience now. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was wondering, uh, did you, if you weren't playing music, did you have a plan B? <laughs> there is no word in English for that. Yebivetar, <laughs> for all the Croatians who listen. <laughs> you are Croatian? No way. How do you translate Yebivetar? <laughs> no, I mean, we never had like a, like a plan B. We always, I mean, we dedicated our whole life since we were like children. Uh, I started when I was five, so it was always my main thing. And if we didn't play as two cellos, we'll probably, you know. You should never have plan B. Or you go for it completely, or you die. <laughs> there you go. Take this up right over here. Hey, thank you for being here. Uh, I was wondering, how, m how long does the, the bowl last you? Because I, I could see you play really intensely. Yeah, I mean, we have like uh, around 10 bows with us on the road, so we like switch them. Like one bow would last us. It depends on the quality of hair, but it can last half a show or it can ha last five shows. You know, it depends on the quality, but we always have like a backup. And in every town we come, we find like a luthier which will rehair the bows for us, so yeah. But when we filmed Glee, for example, we destroyed six bows on the filming in just a few hours. So we ran out of bows. <laughs> because Naya Rivera was like dancing around us in a miniskirt. Right. <laughs> and we got so excited. Like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's why. Yeah. <laughs> and then and we, we, got one. we didn't see a girl for a long time before that because we were on tour with Elton John. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Final question. Uh, have you ever played along with any of the bands that you covered or uh, want to uh, play like maybe live with any of those bands? 
Well, Red Coat Chili Peppers was like a great experience because we opened for them and during our set, uh, Chad Smith, the drummer, he was watching our set on the side of the stage and uh, and when we finished the Highway to Hell, I think it was, we came down uh, before the encores and he said, guys, we should play together, like, do you want to do Back in Black? And we were intending of playing Back in Black and he suggested it, so we said, let's go and it was uh, full of adrenaline and he broke the drum set, it was crazy and then later in the night we played the Californication with the whole band and we just met like Flea and Anthony on, on stage we haven't and we just started jamming he just together. said A minor key and that's it, it spontaneous is always the best yeah that's awesome you guys score is available March 17th the tour kicks off at the end of March all of the details are on their website thank you so much for being here thank, thank you. you for having us thank you